Okay, Dan, the LT50 is positioned as a competitor to the NCE Power Cab, which has been the go-to system as a starter system for the past several years. What advantages does the LT50 have that would make someone want it over the Power Cab? Sure, yeah, you're exactly right. We are marketing the LT50 as a direct competitor to the NCE Power Cab. And uh, some of the features that we have that are new or unique or whatever you like to say compared to the power cab start at the outside. So as you can see here, uh, this throttle shares a lot of uh, similarities to our UWT50, which is our wireless uh, smaller throttle. It has the same knob, same buttons, same uh, fascia, uh, except it's a wired throttle and it also has a built-in command station. Uh, with it being in the same sort of uh, vein as the UWT50, you have the same large, easy to read screen, which is something that you wouldn't find on an NCE power cab, for example. Um, in addition to the screen, you've got easy to read menus. Uh, you've also got other features such as Railcom, which is a new feature to a lot of Americans in particular. Uh, it's a feature that isn't available on other manufacturer, other systems manufactured in the United States, uh, and that is both the same in the UWT50. Or I'm sorry, the LT50 and the CS105 command station. So this throttle is not just a throttle; it's a command station, just like the power cap. And this throttle and command station has all of the features of the CS105 and the UWT50 combined into one easy to hold, easy to handle package. So the LC50 as a command station is also able to be a LCC master station? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So the fascia panel also has the same LCC connectors, which is a Cat5 style, um, eight conductors. So you can use the LC50 with other LCC devices like signal systems and such uh, without any other uh, translators or whatever you would call them. Uh, you don't have to run it with JMRI necessarily and things of that nature in order to run a single system. And that is a big advantage of the LT50 and the CS105. Okay. Um, one of the big things that seems to be getting a lot of chatter on um, forums and whatnot about the GCS systems is consisting. Yes. Because it sounds like there's going to be a new way to consist uh, locomotives. Yes. So the LT50 and the CS105 share the same system? Yes, they do. And can you explain that? Of course. So the consisting system in the uh, LT50 and C CS105 is the same, as you mentioned. And it's very similar in nature to what some users of the UWT100 are already familiar with. So in the UWT100, we have what's called in-throttle consisting, which creates a summation of its members. As you add a member, it becomes part of the consist but it's not actually modifying those members in the sense of CB19, 21, 22. They each become their own uh, member and they are a sum of their parts. With the CS105, that's taken a step further where not only do you have the option to uh, have multiple members, you have the option to uh, select what functions are available in the consist versus what's available in the individual locomotive on a per loco, per function basis from zero all the way up to 28. So unlike uh, advanced consist, as NCE calls it, or any other CV19 based consist, you have all the control up to function 28. So with traditional DCC and function 20, or uh, CV21 and CV22, you're limited to zero through 12. With CS105, that's not the case. And also with the LC50. So in addition, there's another uh, step to that, which is the ease of creating and disbanding and reforming consists. Uh, consisting is a system, or uh, consisting is a very difficult concept to grasp for a lot of, especially new modelers, and even people who are like myself and have lots of experience with it, it can be very challenging. So one of the goals of our command system has been to make consisting simple. So Let's take, for example, an ABBA set or an AAA even. So I can create a consist of those members. I can very easily add them, remove them, uh, run them individually, run them as an AB and an AB or BA, whatever. 
And when I make modifications to my consist settings, those uh, settings will follow that locomotive as long as it stays within our system. So as long as you're running a locomotive on our command station that you've configured, you can make and break consists with that unit and whatever settings you've set up, follow it and will either be uh, turned off when the unit is running solo or turned back on immediately without having to do any other configuration other than adding it to a console. So the consists being stored in the command station. That's correct. In the case of the LT50 and the CS105, that command station is managing your consist. Okay. I turn the power off. I turn the power back on. Is the consist still there? Yes, it is. Okay. So that's definitely an improvement on command station consist from hyper. Um, and so that means that any of the throttles connected to the 105, for instance, to control any of the consists. That's correct. And they can do so simultaneously. And okay, so how do you handle contention? So contention is and I suppose you could call it an issue and a non-issue at the same time. With this ecosystem and just LCC in general, it's a real-time operating system. So I can pick up a Digitrash throttle that's connected, I can pick up an NCE throttle, I can pick up a UWT 150, anything. Anything that is connected to the LCC network as a whole, they will all update each other in real time. Uh, this is an advantage over some other systems where if you call up an address, it has no knowledge of the function status, the speed, uh, if it's in a consist, all that sort of stuff. Whereas with this system, uh, that information is shared with everyone all of the time. So you will have contention, but you won't have the same contention of uh, an operator on a Digitrax, for example, stealing your locomotive, because it's never really stolen, it's just simultaneously controlled. An advantage you have to this, all right? An advantage is, let's say I'm a dispatcher at a club, and uh, Joe Decoder is over on the side of the layout about to ram my, you know, 30 car consist into a staging yard. If I know that, or I see that, I can, as a dispatcher, select that engine, Kill it instantly, either through the e-stop or brakes or just setting the speed to zero. Or all that sort of control is instantly available to everyone, and that includes just individual locomotives, consists, anything. It's one of the not uncommon cries you hear at clubs and whatnot is, who's got my train? That sounds like this is going to be still potentially happening. That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, we have considered this, we haven't come up with an effective implementation for it on how to solve that problem, um, because that is, a lot of people would agree, myself included, that that is a problem. Uh, you don't necessarily want to have somebody else controlling your local mode. Um, but how that remains to be, or how that uh, will be implemented remains to be seen. Okay, so I think we pretty much covered the LT50, CS105. Show us the stuff that will surprise us. Okay. You might want to bring your camera over here because there's something I'd like to show you. Okay. So over here at the CS105, I can do a demonstration for you of how this real-time operating system works. Uh, in this command station, you'll see that I have some other connections that are made here, both in the front and the back. Coming out of the back, I have this LCC cable that's going into a LCC to LocoNet gateway device available from RR circuits. And to it is connected a DT402R uh, radio digitrax throttle. Uh, it's connected in by the wire for now. Uh, what you can do with this system is I can make an update on the UWT100, for example. And in the same time, that will make live updates on the digitrax throttle. I can also reverse that and make a change on the digitrax throttle and you'll see that the UWT100 updates as well. That applies not just for speed, but for functions information as well. Okay, so. At the same time, I also have this NCE throttle here where I can select the same locomotive, 4605, and those functions and speed information will update in every place simultaneously. I noticed that the uh, UWT100 and the 402R 
are not using the same speed scale. That's correct. Yes, that's uh, an interesting little, um, shall we say, uh, novelty of Digitrax, um, where the DT402 and other Digitrax throttles work in a 100 speed step scale, whereas, uh, for example, this NCE Pro Cab and uh, UWT100 work in a 128 speed step scale, so uh, 0 to 126. The uh, LocoNet slash LCC, you know, side of things will handle that translation just as it would be if you were to use uh, any 126 point throttle to operate with a Digitrax command station. Okay, so the other device over here, the turnout controller from yes. DCC Specialties, is that just on a DCC bus or? This is actually available from Bachman. Um, this device, there's a couple different versions of this available from Bachman. Uh, it is a turnout control decoder. This is a trackside version, which is similar to some that have been available from Bachman for some time. It includes a DCC decoder from TCS, which we've been supplying to them for some time. And uh, it's available either as just a push button decoder uh, or a for, uh, solenoid thrower, or it's also available as a DCC accessory decoder, depending on how you set it up. But this is a DCC uh, compatible device. And simply put, I can push this button and it will throw the switch. Uh, and it's not currently in accessory mode, but in Bachman mode, if I select address nine, I can then wait for my train to get out of the way and press function button number three, which is the default setting for these, and it will throw the switch back and forth. Uh, there's another version of this device which looks like a... Uh, switch house shed or a signal shed or something like that. It's basically just an aluminum box with a, a stack on the top. And that functions in the same way. So you can see here, I can press this on my throttle. If this were set in accessory mode, I could open the accessory mode here and throw that DCC accessory as well. So what's the big black cable coming out of the back? This is the power. So our power supply over there, this is a five amp system. So we picked a power supply that was gonna be compatible with it. Um, the supplier uh, supplies it with this cable. Uh, we have an adapter for it. That won't be like that in final production, I promise. Uh, the uh, manufacturer supplies it with the barrel connector that you would expect to see on most systems. Some sort of DIN plug? Yes, So that's correct. So you will have to use a TCS power supply with the CS105? Yes. Okay. The best way we'll be able to do that, yes. Uh, obviously, if you plug something else into it, we don't guarantee the performance at all. So, okay. So tell me about boosters. Boosters. Uh, our intention is to supply two boosters with the system, or, or with the ecosystem, not with the system. Um, we're going to be definitely providing a five amp booster, which is the V105, and the second booster is going to either be a seven amp or ten amp. Uh, we're still working out some details of the hardware to be able to support up to ten amps well, technically more than 10 amps, comfortably uh, without any sort of issues. So those will be coming around at roughly the same time as the system. The B105 will definitely be available at the launch. And then we're uh, hoping to also have the higher amperage booster available at the same time. And those will also be restricted to using TCS power supply. That's correct. And what voltage are they operating or is it switchable? Uh, currently, the system operates at a nominal 15 volts, and that's determined by the power supply that's plugged into it. So will you be providing, like, heavier-duty power supplies for O-scale or LGB-type equipment or lower that's power the for D for yes. Z? Yes. Uh, since it is based on the power supply, a different power supply for a lower voltage is what we will be doing. So when will these be available? The target is... August of this year for the entire system, everything that we've demoed here that isn't already available. Um, so that it, the uh, UWT50s, which actually this is important, the UWT50s will be shipping within the next couple of weeks. Uh, the plastics have been finalized and will be shipped to us in the near future. We're talking a week or two from today's date. And then from there, they will go to our print house to have the fancy dots and all that, our labeling put on it, logos. Uh, and then after that, we go to final assembly and packaging.